Well, now, what is to be a slave of money? Being a slave of money is being in that perpetual movement whereby over 85% of your thinking, 85% of your thinking is revolving around you making money. Like anything and everything that you're thinking about in your life right now, 85% of it is occupied by the way of making money. Two ways can actually make you get yourself in this situation. Point number one is either you actually have less of it or you have none, all right? At that particular point, you ought to think about money every time. Or number two, you're thinking on how you can actually make more of it. You have it, but you're thinking on how you can double, multiply, and have at least more of that exactly money. So two ways makes people become a slave of money. Number one, either you have nothing of it. When you have nothing, you fall desperate of the situation, and you have to do anything and everything to make it. Number two, either you actually looking forward into getting more and more. Now, today I'm going to take you through and explain what you're supposed to do and never get yourself in the situation whereby you are a slave of money. And guess what? There is nothing wrong with money. There is nothing wrong with you. It's only that you do not understand exactly what is going on in your life. All right? Let's get into the business. But before you do exactly that, guess what? All the information that I'm going to share with you here, I'm not charging you nothing. It is free of charge. The only return that I want from you is to like this video, of which it doesn't cost anything, and also subscribing down below there and I know you're asking why because I always post a video each and every day so you never miss any of my good videos let's get into the business okay now the point number one if you don't want to get yourself into slavery of this money okay number one thing that you're supposed to understand is that define eh? define your what define your values your values and what and also things that you call ethics define your values and what we call the ethics what does it mean you see each and every individual always have those values that actually define them okay and the point is this if you ask me i would say always place integrity or dignity above money that's a reality why because if you place dignity above money you gonna you ain't gonna go out there and make money by all means to a point whereby even it's degrading to yourself or degrading to your moral values okay the very first thing that you're supposed to do is you ought to define your values and you ought to define your ethics. So whenever someone shows up and tells you, hey, let's do this for the sake of this, then at that particular point you say, hey, that one has actually gone beyond what I usually do. For example, guys, you do not know, but let me just open this about you. I usually get approached by mostly, um, uh, let me just say, some of the companies, I wouldn't mention the names, and they tell me, hey, Joseph, can you advertise our businesses on your platform? But those companies where they or what they're telling or that they're telling me to advertise on this channel, it does not go in hand with what I usually talk about here. So, well, they're going to pay me and I'm going to make money. But the point is this, what I'm going to tell you guys who are royal followers of mine and tell you things that I do not believe on, then I'll be making something wrong and I'm going to go beyond my values and ethics. That's a reality, okay? It's like when I'm telling you, hey, it's good to create wealth in this process, then at the same time, I'm telling you to bet. Come on, I'll be shooting my foot. That's a reality. The second point that is ought to follow or you're supposed to do you know let me tell you one secret before i actually even tell you the second point you know the reason why you're actually following this trap or we call we usually call it the rat race of slavery when it comes to money it is because some of the needs that you want in your life are way above what you can actually be able to achieve and that's why you have to get yourself in this perpetual sort of a movement for you to get up for all those kind of things and there is one secret that can actually make you survive on this and by the way you can borrow this idea and incorporate Incorporating marriages, incorporating in relationship. And what is it? Is when you expect less. You see, when you expect less, or to a point where you even expect nothing, so whenever you get the slightest appreciation, you always feel it. Now, what can we do when it comes to money? Number one, or the point is, live below your means. That's a reality. Live below your what? Live below your means. What exactly does it mean? For example, if you want 50,000, try to live a 40,000 life or live a 35,000 kind of a lifestyle. What exactly does it mean? You won't have this mental slavery when it comes to money because, hey, guess what? You can actually go ahead and afford your life and you have an excess of 15,000 or 10,000 on top that you can actually channel and create another source of income. Therefore, it means as time goes, you're going to actually go ahead and achieve that what we call the financial freedom. And by the way, financial freedom is the opposite of having a slave of money. Financial freedom is when you do not have to really worry about money. Not really like you don't worry about money, but you do not have to really worry about money. And I always tell people there are two ways how we make money. We can either make money actively 
That means we engage ourselves each and every time. You have to be there. You have to make calls. You have to show up to that job. You have to close that job at the evening and all those kinds of things. So that money that you're making, we usually say you're making that money actively. And the other way you can actually make money, what we call passively, is when you do not have to mind. Like when you buy index fund, when you buy rates, when you buy MMF, when you buy you know bonds and bills and what have you, when you build rentals, it means you don't really have to worry about that. The money just flows in into your account, okay? That is what we call passive income. Now, living below your means, you kind of, you see, living below your means, don't view it from the monetary aspect. View, view, you know, when I say live below your means, view it from a point of whereby I'm saying, just reduce your needs. Just reduce you, which are reducible. See, I'm not saying that you get out of the place and don't rent your houses and go live in the, in the thatched zone. No, 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 I don't mean that. What I mean is live below your means, okay? Meaning, like, just try to reduce the number of needs and wants and things that you actually need your life. But does it mean that you actually now, because you've reduced or you've lived below your means, now you have a comfort that you do not have to think? No, 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 that's not the call. The, you know, we usually call, uh, the, 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 you know, the call here is actually what we say. Once you live below your means, looking from a point off, just create that surplus so that you can be able to invest it and progress to the next level. That's the point that I'm trying to raise out there. Okay, the point number two is you have to do what? Again, the reason as why most people usually find themselves in this perpetual movement, you know, looking for money each and every time, you know, having this level sort of a mentality, you have to make money desperately and by all means and what have you. It is because you, most of these people usually have one source of income. Maybe let's say you are employed or let's say maybe you only have one business or maybe let's say you have one source of, you know, the point is here, the point here is this, you ought to have yourself at least several uh, you know, sources of income. What does it mean now? The point is this, diversify, diversify what? The you are or the what? The portfolio of income or the sources of, or sources of income, okay? That's the point. So once you diversify on the sources of your income, it means if source A, some gets a, some, some sort of a glitch, the source B is out there, the source C is out there, and by the way, you know what they say? This is not me, it's actually out there. They say an average millionaire usually have seven streams of income. Yeah, I know that may sound a bit crazy, and how do you establish it? You see, you don't really force things out. Let things flow, okay? Let things flow, okay? So the point is this, diversify on your income. So one thing you're supposed to understand, if you're employed, you usually get a salary at the end of the month, you have another source, of, you have no other source of income. I am telling you yourself, you're not, you are sitting on a situation whereby if something happens, you're going to get yourself in a very dicey state. And you can just imagine what happened in 2020 and 2021 and what have you when the COVID-19 showed up. You know, a lot of people got retrenched, you know, others were fired and all those kind of things and people were actually struggling. Some of them were having some cars, you know, and you know one thing, car is a liability, by the way, because ought to be done the servicing and also fueling and all those kind of things. At that particular point when they were retrenched or fired, or however you want to name it, they actually realized, hey, guess what? I actually had on top of my life, I had other problems that really require some money. And that's why you're seeing those guys who are doing anything and everything with their cars to make sure that they make some extra coin, okay? So it's good to do what? Diversify, especially when you have an opportunity. Try to invest in this area, try to invest on other areas so that at least you get yourself in a better situation as the life goes on, okay? Let's get into the next point. The next point is what we call, now I think this is where now the real thing is coming in, okay? The next point is this, usually called work-life balance. It's called work-life balance. What exactly does it mean? It simply means, hey, you have to have a word. But baby, have you ever seen people who usually call them a workaholic? Workaholic. This is an individual who works from Monday to Monday, Monday to Monday, Monday to Monday. The guy does not even rest. This Monday to Monday, every time working, every time making money. By the way, you may say these guys are aggressive, but you never know because there is a very thin line that separates greed and aggressiveness. Okay? Can you imagine this? Okay, imagine God himself rested after creating the world in six days. He did rest in the seventh day. So who are you? I mean, like you have to work like throughout the time. It's always good to refresh yourself. It's always good to make sure that at least you don't get carried away by, you know, this issue of making money and every time making money. Because let me tell you one thing. You not only get yourself the anxiety, you become uneasy and all those kind of things. It's always good to make sure that at least you balance the work and you balance the life. Because I always tell people it's good to make sure that you save, you invest, you do this, you grow yourself but at the same time the life that we live in this world well 
it's quite long yeah but it's not like very long you have to also balance all those two aspects because hey life is not all about finance also the social aspect the spiritual aspect and all those factors has to be combined so that at least can make what a good concussion that can actually propagate you to the next life okay and that's why you find some of the people by the time now the money shows up by now you're becoming stable you have yourself blood pressure you have yourself some diabetes because you are not even monitoring your weight and something of sort you are so much inclined into making money whereby even you're not even eating in a, in a healthy way, you're not even living in a healthy habit, and all the other thing you realize by the time now you're getting money, you have the money on your hands, but when you turn back, you do not have a family. The family is gone because all the time was dedicated towards you making money. So you have to have what we call the work and life balance. All those three aspects has to be balanced so that at least you be able to progress to the next level. Because, hey, guess what? Money is okay. And by the way, I am not saying that we should not look for money. Money is the ultimate thing. Money is good money is amazing if you have it life gonna be okay and at the same time also life on other aspect is also amazing and is also good so that you can be able to combine those two things and that actually can be able to make you what a complete individual all right let's get into the last one but not the least the last one is actually called we call and this one by the way most of the people don't get to have this kind of a thing is usually called a what cultivate gratitude gratitude cultivate you know cultivate what gratitude what does it mean it's always good to make sure that you are gratitude you know you know appreciate that what you have okay um when you say i appreciate i don't mean that now you remain comfortable no when i say appreciate or cultivate gratitude simply means do what learn to you know appreciate the situation hey Let's say in your life you've never gotten a hundred thousand. You got your first a hundred thousand. Appreciate that. I, I know the ultimate goal is to get a hundred million or a billion or ten of them. But the point is this: say you've never opened that door of a hundred thousand. You've done it so. So do what? Appreciate the fact and say, hey. Guess what? I am moving to the next level. Appreciate. Learn to say thank you. Learn to say thank you. Once you achieve the next thing, learn to say thank you. Even if you've migrated from one house to the other, just laugh. Just look around. You never lack something that you can never be appreciative about. So when you love this or when you learn this kind of a thing inside of your life, I am telling you, life will be more sweet and you'll have more things to explore. But when you find yourself in a situation whereby when you look around, you see, and that's why I say when you have this mental slavery when it comes to money, you always think about making much of it, there is nowhere time will come and say, hey, guess what? I think I've made much. And by the way, whenever you say you've made much, I think that will be the very first point of you now going down. The point is this. Well, there is nothing like enough money, but it's always good to appreciate milestone. Achieve, you know, Once you achieve a certain milestone, appreciate it. If you had no home, you've actually built your home. Even if it's not worth millions of money, appreciate that level. When you buy yourself the first car, appreciate that level. When you actually get something, appreciate it. So when you love to have these things called the gratitude deep inside of you, you always see positive things about life. But when you you know, really focus on the thing like you are all the time you are malcontent, malcontent, malcontented or something of sort, you're going to get yourself in lots of problems. You're going to develop anxiety, you know, depression, stresses, ulcers, whatever, blood pressure, name them. Okay? All those non-communicable diseases. So it's always good to make sure that you incorporate those five things that I've actually shared. Those are the most important things that you ought to have. And guess what? Once you incorporate them, you're never going to get yourself into what? The money slavery. Guess what? You can always pick my number from the description of this specific video. Shoot me a call and let's have a conversation because I offer those services at a personal level. All right? For just a cup of coffee. I also, I also have some booklets about investments. Pick a copy goes for only 280 for now. It's a good buy and see you in the next one.